Hello there, welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm going to be creating a die cut card. So get comfy and let's get crafty. So the supplies I'm using today are mostly honeybee stamps. I do have this embossing folder. I think it's um, a Dari Swan, but I don't know. It doesn't have a label on it anymore. It's a vine. I'm using the Rattan Basket die set. I'm using the Lovely Layers Greenery die set. I am using the Lovely Layers Tulips die set as well. Um, and then eventually I pull in the Holiday Bloom stamp set for the sentiment. I do have some Concord and Ninth inks I'm going to be using with some little blending brushes to add some dimension to the die cuts. Um, all of these die cuts um, have um, an embossed part as like it embosses and dies at the same or cuts at the same time. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit of ink to the stem of the greenery and then the kind of sort of bottoms of the leaves, but some of these leaves have like dark, I mean, I didn't really go true dimension. I just added another color because some of these leaves are twisted. Some of them are bent. And so the dimension would really go probably not just on the bottom, <laughs> but I'm using um, two colors of um, kind of an aqua green for these greenery um, um, leaves that I die cut. And then for the stems on the tulips, I'm using a traditional green just for a little bit of um, difference. And then the background of the card that I sent through the um, embossing folder is also a third shade of green. So um, it just kind of creates that um, more than one color, a little depth of color if there's more variants of the same color. For the rattan basket, I used one color of ink and I used a little ink blending brush. And on the piece that's the back, originally I just um, added some color to the top and the handle. But when I put the top layer of that on over it, I realized there's going to be shadows um, behind, like in those openings, in the square openings, right? In the little holes of the weave. So while I was putting some ink blending on the sides and the bottom of this, the front piece, I realized I've got to put color on the entire the entirety of the back piece. So I did all my die cutting out of colored paper. Again, this card, I think I did that on the last die cut card I made as well. Um, but you could totally do this out of white cardstock and either ink blend it or Copic marker color it or watercolor it or color pencil color it. However, whatever your medium is, I just was kind of, um, let's go with cardstock today. I have lots of scraps of cardstock. It was easy. <laughs> I did not have to um, cut any pieces of paper to find scraps big enough to create the elements for this card. By adding the ink blending to the sides, it kind of gives that basket a, a rounded look. It makes it look three-dimensional. Um, we're going to do the leaves next. So I have the leaves all cut out of one color green cardstock, and I'm going to, and the leaves come in. So the stems with the leaves on them have two pieces and then the stems that are just the stems that only have one piece. So I'm going to add the ink to the stem and then the bottom side of the leaf. Although on the first large leaf, I put the ink on the wrong side. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> By the time that all gets put together, it just looks like a shadow from one of the other elements in the basket anyway. So my plan is to put all of this greenery inside this rattan basket and put it on the front of a card. I don't know if I mentioned that before or not yet. I did have to kind of play around with these leaves to make sure I was um, ink blending them properly. And that's the one you can see. I clearly put the dark on the upper side of the leaf and it should be on the lower side of the leaf, but eh, it's okay. It's okay. It, it'll be fine. It'll look fine. Everything's fine, right? Um, I did remember to figure out which piece went where on the next one. I do have an extra stem here. I um, the stem with the leaf to the left, I die cut two of and I only used one. So the tulips. Now, if you've been here for any other video that involved florals, you probably heard me say that tulips are my favorite. And I love to have blue and yellow tulips together. Blue and yellow. Purple and yellow <laughs> tulips together. Um, the squirrels in my yard, the, my sister calls them um, tree rats. They've effectively eaten all the bulbs in my garden, so I'm going to have to do something. I heard that you can plant garlic around the, the, the bulbs of your tulips and daffodils and stuff, and the squirrels won't eat them, so I will be trying that this fall. Um, on the tulip dye, there is um, three layers to each. So this set has three different flowers. I use the two smaller flowers, and each of the 
two flowers has at least three pieces and each of the pieces has some places where there are um, embossed edges. And then there's flat edges and those flat edges are the parts of the tulip that you cover up with the next layer. So I kind of put them together how they went so that I could figure out where to add the ink blending. And now we're going to assemble. I will show you how I assembled one large one and one small one. I didn't make you watch all four of that or all four of those assemblies. Um, on these tulips in particular, at the bottom of the bloom, there is a little notch on every single piece. And that's how I was able to line up all the pieces and get them to lay just right. There's just this little um, N-shaped notch right at the bottom on all of the pieces. So that was kind of perfect. The larger of these two blooms that I used has four pieces and the smaller one has three, I think. So we're just gonna line up the notches. Um, and you'll kind of notice that there's a little bit of ink blending to kind of emphasize some of the shadow. It's not, like I said, exactly directional, <laughs> but it does add a little bit of dimension to the um, flower. So on the smaller piece, there's one, the back panel is like the, the base piece and it has almost no embossing on it at all, just one side of it. And then the center um, petal has a little bit of embossing, but the majority of the embossing on this closed bloom is on the top layer. All right, so now that we have all of our flowers put together, we need to put our um, stems and leaves together. And this was a little bit of a, an easier task <laughs> because they can really only go on one way. <laughs> it did take a little second to get them lined up, which is why I'm losing, using well, liquid glue because it gives you just a minute to put things together. Um, I did ink blend the stems, the darker color too. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. There's two little stems that don't have flowers on them. I did ink blend them as well. So we're going to go ahead and put this last stem together and then we're going to start assembling our card. Um, I have a white card base today because that's what was on my desk. I'm using a white card base. It's a top fold USA 2 size card, um, portrait style. I'm going to go ahead and score that in the middle and then fold it and um, crease the seam. It's a heavy card base, so it took a little bit of little extra finesse. And then I have my embossed panel here and I'm trimming it down to be four by five and a quarter inches so that there's a little bit of a border all the way around the embossed panel. And I just took like an eighth of an inch off each end to make sure that I didn't have any um, flat edges. Cause you know, sometimes embossing folders, they don't go all the way to the edge. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead. This kind of a, um, embossing folder has a little bit of a vine on it. And I thought I had remembered to show you that, but I think I probably forgot to show you that. Um, <laughs> it's Monday. I'm hanging out in my craft room. Still on my PJs and it's four o'clock in the afternoon because why not? It's Monday. <laughs> I um, did turn my card base upside down because I was holding the panel the way I didn't want it, like upside down to me. And I didn't want to have to finagle the tweezers. So I just turned my card base upside down. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start assembling our focal point. Now, I put glue on the very edge of each side of the front piece of this basket and the bottom. And that is 100% the way you should assemble this. However, all things being said, I would not have put the top on until I had my um, flower bunch all put together because that created a little bit of a assembly issue. Also, the tulips, I have like four pairs or three pairs of reverse clamp tweezers on my desk and I used all of them. I put a little dab of glue, put the flower on the stem and put it up to the side, put a little dab of glue, put the flower on the, or, yeah, the flower on the stem and then put it off to the side. In fact, I know I have four pair of tweezers, but there are only three on my desk. So I used three. And why do I have three or four rather? Because I thought I lost one and the other two came in a package together. That's why I have three. And then four I have because they're old and the finger grips have come off. So they're my emergency pair that I keep in my desk for. <laughs> they're not the, they, they don't close the tightest anymore. Um, they're the very first pair I bought and they weren't great. You know, they were, I think I got them like dollar spot or dollar tree or something. Okay. So when putting it together inside the basket failed, so what I've done is laid things out on top of my desk. And I have those um, kind of bluish green leaf pieces 
The one that looks like eucalyptus, I actually, not the one, the one on the right, not the eucalyptus, the other one looks kind of like an ivy. I actually cut the bottom of it off so that I had another piece. And I assembled it on my desk and I made sure that there was um, kind of the viney greenery in between the flowers and that the purple and the yellow, the small purple did not overlap the large purple because then you won't be able to see it. I did kind of, you know, I laid it all out, finessed it, made sure it was you know, narrow enough and tall enough to fit. And um, then I realized I couldn't pick it up like this. <laughs> so I am very carefully picking up one piece at a time and putting a little glue on the back. I started on the front, then I wiped it off and put it on the back on the back of the stem or greenery. And then I'm just putting the pieces in one piece at a time. This is why I would not assemble the front of the basket before you got all of your stuff in it. Because at least if you're doing like stem, like greenery, if you were gonna put like, um, like apples or you know something that didn't have stems or didn't need quite as much finagling, it might not matter, but um, yeah. <laughs> so now I know this I think this might be the first time I've actually put together that rattan basket die set so now I know I know to um, not put the top on I did use my tweezers and then a little bit that little stylus to kind of put a little pressure down on the pieces as I stuck them in the basket to make sure that the glue had a minute to adhere to the back you know whatever it was gluing itself to and once I had the greenery all put in there, I did pick out that third piece of um, leaf, leafery greenery, <laughs> just to kind of fill up that empty space in the back. Okay, Whew, we got that all done. And it is just barely <laughs> short enough to fit on my card. Uh, clearly did not measure that very well. I'm adding glue to the back of the basket and glue to the back layer of the flowers and things. I'm going to put it on the front of my card and hold it down for a couple seconds. And then I'm going to add some glue to the backs of some of the front pieces just to keep them a little more st stable and secure because those tulip stems are really quite delicate. Um, now I've got to figure out a sentiment. And I hadn't thought about before that beforehand. I do that a lot. I, I don't think about my sentiment until I'm um, done with the card. So I pulled out this Holiday Blooms. It's also a honeybee stamp set from last Christmas. It's the one with the Christmas, um, oh, what are those flowers are called? Um, I used the Hello Friend, and I'm going to white heat emboss this on a piece of that same color craft cardstock that the basket was made from. Um, I did remember to treat my cardstock with anti-static powder so that the embossing powder will only stick to the ink um, I did ink the stamp up two times just because, and I'm using a pigment, a white pigment ink for that. And for some reason, I don't know how, my embossing powder came out of my drawer and made a huge mess all over my desk. So I did have to take a minute and pause and clean that all up because it's Monday. And then we went ahead and heat set that in um, sentiment and I ran it through my die cut machine with its coordinating die. I did not take this die in place because since I got, I've been using this magnetic mat, I haven't had a problem with that, but this one moved just a tad. So it's not quite centered, um, but that's okay. I did grab that brown ink and the ink blending brush and go around the um, edges, there's the word, of the, the die cut sentiment. And then I just took the microfiber cloth, cloth wowzers and wiped off any of the ink that had gotten on the embossed sentiment. I am going to pop this up with a little bit of foam tape. This is the Alta New roll of foam tape. I just put a couple little pieces on that so that I can have it pop up off the basket and I have it just over to the right hand side. But then I had to add some bling, right? So I got this clear bin. This is um, from the home edit, like the home edit line from Walmart. And I'm digging through my honeybee gems and things looking for purple. And when I got this little bin, I dug out all of my other things. I had a whole bunch of Stampin' Up! ones I didn't know I still had. I was looking for purple. And then I decided I didn't really want the purple. And I decided to go ahead and use those um, Stampin' Up! flatback pearls. 
and I have a whole bunch of the really big ones left on here. So I grabbed my pokey tool and I added five of those big pearls to the front of this card. I put three up in the top left hand corner and two in the bottom right. And I'm kind of putting them down in between the bossed, embossed parts of that card panel. So it kind of fills in the um, in the, in the embossing a little bit and it just adds a little bit of something something to the front of the card. So now we're all done with the card. We've got it all put together. There's a little bit of dimension on our die cuts. There's a little bit of bling from the pearls on the front of the card and it can be in anything you want it to be card. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a couple of other videos here I think you will like. I've also added that subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me your favorite flower. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and have a really great day.